Okay, we're live on Facebook and we're recording. Everybody ready? We'll start the meeting with the Pledge of the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, at liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everybody to our November 19th board meeting. Uh, can we get started with a motion to approve the village board meeting minutes from November 19th? Moved. Second. Any questions, changes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Anybody out there citizen-wise has a comment, feel free to send a message to this Facebook page and uh, we'll check it and get, get back to you. Um, trustees comments, Andy. Uh, just the agenda, thank you. Bruce? When I would say I'd like to add an item to the agenda. Um, I'd like to add a, amend a motion from our last meeting Motion 138 2020, changing the authorized amount for the Aspen Springs pump station repair. Aspen Springs or Baldwin Hill? Baldwin Hill. I don't know what it is. Baldwin Hill. Okay, I thought Baldwin Hill was on the other side of 431, 631. I don't know which one's which. Baldwin, the pump station? Baldwin Hill's just past the old Burns Dairy. All the hills on the top of the hill. The other one's on the bottom of the hill. <laughs> okay. Baldwin hill. The building up near the water tower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, we've got that as item E on the agenda. Anything else, Bruce? No, I, I'll stick to the agenda. All right. Mark? Uh, agenda items only. Thank you. <clears throat> Michael Shepard? Agenda is good. Thank you. Ruth Seiko? Agenda is good. Thank you. Megan? Just the agenda. That's everybody. Okay. Um, got a few things. Um, did get our um, light up the village uh, thing going. Ashley Casey did a nice story with a messenger to uh, hopefully get some people encouraged to light up. And uh, I was very pleased at Pack B. Um, joined in and wanted to make it even bigger. And now they've got a contest for people who decorate with three $100 gift certificates to businesses in the village available. Um, I guess it's a front door decoration, um, a general overall video of your complete decorations. And then the third category is kind of a miscellaneous if you know, if you dress your dogs up in costumes or you know, get your little kids all dressed up as elves and they're gonna that's kind of a category that just is a catch-all for everything that isn't a front door or your whole house so kind of nice and hopefully uh that starts uh the 21st which is saturday they're going to start uh, accepting people's nominations because there are people who already have their house decorated uh and you can vote go on the facebook page, the, the Baldwinsville Public Access Channel page, and vote on the ones that you like the best, and the winners will get a $100 gift card, which is kind of a nice pre-Christmas present. Um, and then the Fireside and Beeville Connection caught on and said they're doing something, and uh, I don't have in front of me, I think it's December 6th, but I, I got to make sure people check on that. It'll be a drive up um, Christmas thing where they'll have a, a special menu of like three items that you can order ahead of time. You pull up, you'll get the meals. Um, Santa Claus will be there, I think, in the back of a pickup truck. Kids can get out and stand, you know, in the foreground. So there's a picture of the kids with Santa in the background. Um, you know, so it's a chance for the family to get out, the kids to see Santa, do some things like that. I'm guessing other people will catch on and think it, it's a good time to have um, special attractions and none of them, you know, go against any of the kind of safety things that we've been advocating. Most of the things are in the car. Um, I, I know that somebody was advertising on Facebook or not advertising, but, but uh, questioning 
could some tree cutting company had a truck they were going to put santa claus in the, up in the back of the truck and ride through neighborhoods and they were asking what neighborhoods would like them to come with santa claus so um, people who may want to go on facebook and see if they can find that uh, i know that people in the candlewick neighborhood were a lot of them were saying yeah we'd like that we'd love that now the kids can go out at the, the end of the driveway and wait for santa claus and, uh, just a little something extra to add to the holiday uh, season that's going to be a little strange for some people. Um, so things are going nice for the holidays. Um, you know, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving before we get too late and I forget about it. Um, I know Meals on Wheels, which normally is <coughs> uh, Thanksgiving and the day after, uh, and they send out a meal on uh, Wednesday. Thanksgiving meal, you know, turkey and, and probably a piece of pumpkin pie and that type of stuff. They're going to be open Thursday morning and have a, so the meal that they take out to their clients will be hot, fresh cooked meals. So that's a really nice treat from uh, Donna Metz and her crew. Uh, and Donna's looking for a part, or chef. Anybody's looking for part-time work, like 7 to 11 every day, Monday through Friday. You're tired and looking for some part-time work or you need a second job, uh, get a hold of Donna Metz at Meals on Wheel. Um, I'd like to give a tip of the cap to Jeff Rogers at Angry Garlic. He's been so selected as the business person of the year. Uh, if you know Jeff, um, he's, he is a go-getter and he has worked very hard during the pandemic particularly, but even before to make his business and the whole business community uh, thrive and so he's been selected as the business person of the year and uh, I think it's well deserved people see Jeff out in the community um, give him a, a wave and a, and a congratulations um, it is our budget time uh, Monday is I think the time to turn in your budgets I'm sure I'm not stealing Anna's thunder um, she will repeat this I'm sure when it's her turn but Got good news last night. We met with the county mayors on a Zoom call, <coughs> and I asked Brian McMahon where we stood with the money that we get from the county, the VIP money. And he said, We have a contract with villages to give them that money, and that you will get your money, that that money is protected. So for us, that's over $700,000 um, that we should be very thankful that we're seeing in our budget. So, uh, it was good news. Um, I'll tell you what, if you know Ryan at all, give him a call or send him an email and, and you know, give him you know, an attaboy because he has worked his tail off to protect this county and to keep everything going forward. Uh, the question came up about if PPE start becoming short supply, contact the county, they'll get you what you need. They'll you know, figure out a way to get it. Um, and, and a lot of what people have gotten from the county, um, the county absorbed the cost of, of much of it. Lately, they've been telling people, you know, go to your own supplier and pay for it because you know, we'll have some when it gets to that point where there isn't any other, but we'd like to protect it. So uh, hats off there to the county. Um, and just, we've had, a few people asking us about Shaxboro. I think with Christmas coming, a lot of people are thinking about they have great gifts and Shaxboro has been closed. Uh, they will, if you call and you could ask if you have a picture of you know, some house that burned in 1906 or something and if they got it, they might make a copy for you. But they've been closed. But they are now gonna be open. If, if, you've ever, if you've been to Shaxboro, you know, their gift center is in, in the front hallway what they've done is they've moved everything in back into the museum so that there's room and they're going to allow people to come in by appointment one at a time. We've got 45 minute blocks. If you, when you come in, you got 45 minutes to do your shopping. You're distance from the person who's running the place. You have to wear a mask. Um, the number is 638-2452 if anybody's interested in Shaxborough. Um, they're going to be open on Thursday, Friday, 
on Saturday from noon to four and on Sundays from noon to three. And if you've ever been over there, their gift shop was had some unique stuff. So that's kind of good news. Uh, they're making that stuff more available. Um, let's see where my agenda went here. I've lost it in a while. And that's all I have. And we'll move on to department heads. Um, Bob, our attorney. Uh, just a couple of things, Mayor. Uh, first of all, just to let the board know, uh, I've been working with uh, Ruth and also Anna um, regarding Canton Woods and some reorganization. Uh, the, there was an activities group, which was uh, a kind of an informal uh, uh, arrangement among uh, some of the uh, people that were working with Canton Woods and very active in, in setting and in working with the activities. Um, there seemed to be some confusion as to as to how that should be set up, and we uh, now that's been merged uh, into a, uh, a committee. So the, the people that were activity uh, were were working in the activities group is now they're members of a committee under the uh, not for profit corporation Kent Woods. That's um, that's the fundraising group that, that supplies uh, funds towards the operation of the center. Uh, a chair, I believe, either has been or is being uh, selected. Uh, they're not up. Uh, someone seemed to be confused that they were electing officers and still going on, but they really aren't. It's it's merged in, and this will make things a lot more efficient too, because they're now uh, all under the one roof and the board of directors of the uh, of the the not-for-profit corporation. As you know, the uh, the senior center is is owned by and operated by the village. And the not-for-profit corporation is a uh, uh, assists us and, and acts as a right arm with respect to fundraising and and suggestions that sort of thing. But uh, the operation is really one of, of the villages. So this is moving along very well, and we're uh, working on uh, uh, budget questions that uh, had been raised by some people, and and that uh, uh, that will show up in our 2021 budget. So things are moving along very well there. And as I say, there had been some questions about. Uh, how things were set up and, and we just kind of revised things a little bit. The other item that I'd like to bring up, uh, and I, again, I'll, I'll uh, defer as well to our code enforcement officer, is the this entire issue of uh, temporary signs and, and uh, signs that were put out for the election. Uh, there seems to be some misunderstanding at what an election is uh, and because of some of the confusion in the presidential election, that uh, somehow the election uh, has not taken place. Well, the election is the day on which votes are cast. That day has come and gone. We do have uh, a, a provision in our, in our code for temporary signs uh, of uh, various natures, including political banners and signs, but also uh, any other temporary events uh, so that they, they can be uh, uh, Put in place for 30 days. However, three days after the termination of, or after the uh, event has taken place, those si signs are supposed to be removed. So uh, the, uh, even though you look at the headlines and, and the, uh, uh, the television news and they're still talking about the results of the election, the election itself is over and those signs really do need to be taken down. There seemed to be some confusion as to whether or not uh, we had the ability to uh, uh, monitor uh, political and, and uh, uh, election signs because of the First Amendment of the Constitution, but we don't, uh, under our sign code, we do not uh, single those out. We have uh, provisions in our sign code that talk about um, temporary signs for uh, uh, various types of activities without, without talking about content. So in my opinion, uh, those are those regulations and that rule is protected. And, and uh, so those, those uh, uh, political signs, which are temporary, do need to come down the three days after the election. But I'll, I'll also defer to our code officer. But other than that, I'll, I'll stick with the agenda. Okay. I got a question for you, Bob. Can I ask a question real quick? Sure. What, what about the proximity of the sign? What if, what's the difference between somebody having a sign in their front yard freestanding versus somebody who's had a sign inside their house facing toward the street in a, in a window. Is, is there a difference in, in that? 
does the proximity of the sign have any uh, influence on whether it needs to come down or not? Well, I, I'll defer to the code officer to, to Greg on that, but the, the, uh, uh, we talk about a, a, a sign or banner that is not permanently connected. Uh, now, generally speaking, inside signs for commercial purposes, uh, where you've got signs inside the, the, uh, the window of a, uh, uh, of a business, generally are, are defined as signs. So I, I would ask Greg uh, what our interpretation is. Mean, what, 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 what would differentiate somebody hanging a, a Philadelphia Eagles uh, flag from their front porch versus somebody uh, supporting a, uh, a gun act out there in their window? I mean, what would, the, what would, well, the, with, the, the, the relative to the, first of all, relative to the, uh, uh, the temporary sign uh, rule that we have, um, these are signs that have to do with an event, whether it's a special event or an election. Um, we, we do not have a rule that, uh, diff that um, regulates the content of a sign. So if someone has a, uh, a, a, uh, Safe act sign. Yeah, or, like or, or let's say Black Lives Matter sign. Um, that that's that's not a uh, um, that's not a sign that relates to a specific event. Now, if it's a if it's a temporary sign that says that and it's uh, put in their front yard, then we've got a thirty day limitation. But I, I, as I say, Greg is the expert on this, and I, I would. Uh, let him discuss that more fu more fully. Thank you. All right. Um, before I go to Greg, I have forgotten something to mention. Um, I wanted to go a good big thank you to John Zach, who donated the Christmas tree this year up on Brown Street. Um, you may have seen some video on Facebook uh, provided by Shelly Hoffman of the tree being lifted from that yard, from the tree going down Oswego Street past her house, to the tree being put in the hall down at the square. And uh, Chuck's crew got that done pretty quick um, the other morning, Wednesday morning. And uh, it wasn't too long after I saw the videos uh, that I heard the brush trucks going down the street. So they went from one job to the next pretty quick. Um, it's a nice looking tree and uh, I'd like to thank the Zachs for donating and uh, for next year for people who might have a nice looking pine tree in their yard. Uh, keep us in mind, maybe towards the end of summer, let us know so we can decide, you know, if there's more than one, we can take a look at them. Um, and Chuck has been a big advocate of using the crane. Um, it just makes it so simple. They cut it, lift it out, lay it on the bed, take it down, lift it back out, put it in the hole and it's done. Um, you know, signed, sealed, delivered, and wrapped in a bow. So uh, thanks again to John Zach. Now we'll move on to Greg with codes. I, I guess I'll address some more of the, uh, the temporary sign regulations. All temporary signs have a limitation of 30 days to be displayed. No matter what the content, they have a limitation of 30 days. That that, that talks about promotional devices, not just signs. Um, when you get into signs related to elections, events, sales, uh, civic activities, uh, like we have a turkey trot or we have a different event going on, those signs are limited to 30 days, but they also must be taken down within three days after that event has ended. Our, our code does not say whether the sign has to be in the yard or in a window or, you know, hanging from a flagpole. It, it says temporary signs. <laughs> the only limitation on location we have is within the right of way of the street and on public property. So I would assume that if a sign is visible from a house placed in a window, then it would still be considered a sign. And I, I just don't know how we can differentiate that when the code doesn't do that. I had a chance and an opportunity to review some of that in a whole different circumstance for the 
sign like device inside a house is not regulated by any government, is my understanding. That's something I can look into tomorrow. I think it's within the house, you can do what you want. I believe. It's definitely a gray area. And, and Greg, as you know, I've been approached uh, about this and I just want some clarification. That's all. It's not, I mean, this, Absolutely. it goes, it, it, this could encompass up hundreds of window signs that say numerous things for numerous causes. And whether they're going to be regulated under our 30 day policy or in regard to a specific date of an event, we, we probably just need to figure that out. That's all. I'll get back to you. Anything else, Greg? I, I think that's it. I, you know, other than, you know, we're, we're still busy uh, writing permits, um, issuing permits. Um, people are still wanting to get their projects done. And uh, it, it's just been a, it's been a busy year for people getting projects done on their homes. It's, that's one good thing that may have come from yeah. all of this time away from the office. So. Good. That's good to hear. All righty. We'll move on to our clerk. Mo? Uh, yeah, I just want to remind uh, village residents that the water, any outstanding water bills should be paid by November 25th or they will be levied on taxes next year. Um, otherwise, everything's going great and I'll stick to the agenda. Very good. Thank you, Mo. Um, we'll go on to our treasurer, Anna. Yes, um, as, the, as the mayor uh, mentioned, um, I need to have the, everyone's budget to me uh, next Monday. Um, I also would like to know how everyone wants me to distribute the budget to the trustees. Should I mail them? Are you going to be coming in to pick them up? Um, I just need to know how to get them to you in time for our work session. I can have members of the department uh, drop them off to trustees' homes if uh, that would make things easier. Okay. Is everybody fine with that? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can do that too if anyone needs them delivered. Yeah, if if as long as I know when someone's going to be home, obviously we've got officers on call twenty four seven. I can just uh, we can have them in a sealed packet and drop them off. Okay, that would be great. Thank you, Mike. Is that it, Anna? Um, that's it for now. Just stick to the agenda. There's some things. Yeah, that's good. Okay, very good. Um, next up, we have the Senior Center. Ruth. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, one more reminder that if you would like the Christmas meal delivered, you do need to make your reservation by December 4th. So just call the Senior Center. Someone will bring you a nice meal for Christmas Day, but you need to do that by December 4th. Um, the clerk's office was nice enough to post for me the Onondaga County Office for Aging plan, service plan for 2021. If you would like to take a look at it, they are looking for feedback. That's time limited. So if you want to get on and give them feedback, there's a couple different ways to communicate with them, but that is on the village website. And we are doing some limited programming, which is going very well. Um, I want to thank Chief Lefencheck for a little uh, affirmation and support on some questions I had about what we were doing. But so far, so good. I think that's it, unless anybody has any questions. Thank you. Okay. Move on. Next, Public Works. Chuck. I think the biggest thing that in the last oh, couple, three weeks has been the brush pickup. Um, that's winding down now. Uh, we, we got through Candlewick the other day in an hour and a half. And previously, it's been days to get through there. Um, we're coming to the end. We're, we're going to go as long as we can. But if you have stuff to get out to the street, get it out, and, and we'll pick it up. Uh, the other thing was a Christmas tree. That, that went really well today. I know you touched on that. Uh, <clears throat> we, had, we, had, we had some help there. Everybody wanted to know what, we're, what the village was doing in someone's backyard taking a tree down. <laughs> but other than that, that went well. Uh, geez, like I say, with a crane, I think we started oh, around 8 o'clock, and uh, it, was, it was down to the square, and the guys were back out on brush. You know, right around 10, 10 30. So that went very well. And uh, they're working on getting the Christmas decorations up now. And I think the tree's almost done. And uh, in the next week, we should have everything up. Beautiful. Other than that, this for deer hunting. Pardon me? 
Just for deer hunting? And that's starting soon, so that's very important. <laughs> I thought it was Santa Claus. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> he's starting to get that look a little bit, isn't he? Yeah, it's right around the corner. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll move on to police chief. Mike? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, first I'd like to start out with uh, uh, the passing of a longtime member of uh, the department, our communications uh, officer uh, from the past, from the 80s and 90s, Larry Schuler uh, passed away. His services were uh, last Saturday. And uh, if anyone called the, the police department on Saturday or Sunday from uh, eight in the morning until four in the afternoon, uh, they, they likely talked to Larry during that time period. And, then if they called on Saturday from four to midnight, they talked to Chuck because Chuck was uh, dispatching for a long time during that time period. But uh, Larry was a good friend of mine and uh, uh, he, he enjoyed uh, playing a lot of pranks on the officers and uh, was a valued member of the department. And for those people that don't know, um, this would never be allowed today with the insurance requirements. And I can't imagine the village attorney back then thinking it was a good idea, but starting in the, in the late 70s and through the 80s and 90s, um, members of the police department took a, gr a group of, of youth, a group of boys up to the Adirondacks for a week to basically learn about life in the outdoors and learn a little bit about themselves and overcoming adversity. And uh, John Merritt and Mike Engels and Tom Leroy were, were some of the, the people that went on those trips and Skip Sosha. Uh, uh, our village mechanic went, is, is the medic, and Larry was a big part of that as well. Larry always brought his boat up uh, in case of an emergency should, should arise, and Larry did that for, for over 20 years and, and really enjoyed uh, that. And, uh, he's going to be missed by, by those members of the department that worked with him. And, uh, and then, Mayor, uh, obviously, I would just comment uh, on the 15th, our, our night parking ban. I know we've both been speaking about it uh, greatly with Shelly and and in this form as well went into effect. So I would ask people to please uh, not park on the street, allow Chuck and his crew the opportunity to keep the roads cleared uh, when, once it starts snowing. And other than that, Mayor, I will stick to the agenda unless there's questions. Okay, very good. Um, pending business, so we'll move on to new business. Um, and I get a motion supporting participation in the CNY Stormwater Coalition staff services and education compliance assistance program and agreed to fund its portion of the program cost in the amount of $3,600. So moved. Second. Bruce and, and uh, Megan, um, any questions? This is an annual thing, I believe. It seems very familiar. Yes, it's annual and it's something that years ago we determined cost less to do this than to try and fulfill the educational component and other aspects of it in-house. Okay, thanks Bruce. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. All righty, item B. Get a motion to set a budget budget work session via Zoom for the, for the March 1st, 2021 through February 28th, 2022 budget on Thursday, December 3rd, 2020 at 6 p.m. Moved. Yeah, Ruth and Mike Shepard, um, you, you should have had your budgets from Anna by then. Um, if, if we get confused and people aren't around, to, you know, let me know and I'll coordinate with Mike and Anna. We'll somehow get, get you your copies. Um, we can always, you can always go down when you're around and stop in the evening, if you if you want to pick it up on your own, that's a that's fine too. Um, Jeff, excuse me. Yeah. Um, uh, talking to the chief earlier, we were kind of hashing that around. Now, does that have to be publicized, or I think I also mentioned whether or not we could do it in house, in person. I, I think we have to. We just have to t help people that it's a public meeting. Anybody can join it on Zoom just like our regular meetings. So. Right, Bob? But well, we won't be doing it live, correct? Um, we, can, we can do it live if, we, if you think we should do it live. What do you think, Bob? 
I you know, know. people. It, it is a it is a meeting of the uh, of the board, so it's a public meeting. Okay, so we should probably go live at, at six, and then we'll break it like seven twenty to everybody take a bathroom break, and and we'll go have a regular meeting. Then we can continue. Uh, join back into the budget meeting afterwards. It's what we've done in the past. Uh, hopefully, uh, we aren't going to be going until 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night, but um, if, every, if everybody is okay with that, that's the way we'll do it. Okay? Uh, I'm okay with it, but does that mean we're going to reschedule the DPW meeting or cancel it, Bruce? I told Bruce you could do it. You can do it. You know, you can have one at five thirty. Go for you know have half hour meeting or something, and you know five fifteen to six. It's a long night, but have you not met our meetings? You no, know, we don't even get the uh, warm up the band in, in half an hour. <laughs> you can go the day before, but if you do, you got to make you got to publicize it. You know, put it on Facebook that you're going to have a public works meeting if anybody wants to. You know, we could just have the public works meeting, and when we're done, we'll join you. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. You'll have to make sure people know that that meeting is available. I mean, we don't get many people show up to the public works meetings anyways, but um, just in case somebody were to have a, a question, they would have access. We'd make sure they, they know what the Zoom password is and so on. The right. difficult part about this is, of course, we won't be meeting with our department to review the budget before. We'll see it at the same time you do. Yeah, that's why it would be nice if you could do something, you know, the day before yeah. or Tuesday or something for, you know, even if you just did it for 45 minutes just to go over the budget with Chuck. And make sure Chuck's not out in the field hunting. All right, I'll, let, I'll let, you, let us know what you just decide which, when you're going to have it and, and you know that type of stuff. But um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry I'm going to vote no. Hmm? I'm going to vote no. Okay. There's not an issue game that night, so. No, there's a DPW meeting. <laughs> All right, item C, can I get a motion authorizing the mayor to sign the agreement for the use of Okra Solid Waste Management System? The term of this agreement is for the calendar years 2021 and 2022. Andy? Mark? Um, I think this is a standard agreement. Um, I know that prices are going up. Um, it won't directly affect us because we don't have our own trash pickup. But um, communities that do pick up trash will see that their recycling fees are up, I don't know, $24 a, a thousand, or I don't know exactly what how it was figured. Our people who get trash picked up by professional services will see that their, their costs will go up um, because it's Okra's explanation is that they, are getting nothing back now on recycling, that they're actually having to pay for people to recycle their stuff. So they're now handing it, finally decided to hand it back to homeowners. So, okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Item D. Can I get a motion accepting the resignation of John J. Vito Jr. from the position of part-time police officer with the Bonesville Police Department, effective November 16th, 2020? Moved. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Item E, can I get a motion to amend a resolution from our last meeting, resolution 138-2020 um, regarding um, the Baldwin Hill pump station, I believe it is, and that, that it's going to cost more than we had budgeted last time, $4,000 more. The last time it was, uh, well, I'll move, make the motion. A second. 
Second from Megan. Okay, last time it was approved at 18, up to $18,000. The, the budgeting figure, the, the vendor came back and said there was an error in calculations um, and it was going to cost more. So now I'd like to amend that motion to approve up to $22,000. And out of the same account? Yes. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any other questions for Bruce? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Very um, Any other business that we need to address uh, before we adjourn? Yeah, I didn't uh, remember to mention this um, during my comments, but um, it's a time of year um, for Christmas Bureau starting up again this year. Um, just wanted people to know that the Christmas Bureau drop-off will be uh, November 28th through December 14th. It's in the same location as it was in last year, which is in um, one of the storefronts just to the right of Topps Market. So um, they are you know, putting appropriate um, procedures in place for COVID to keep everyone safe. So, but people are still welcomed and encouraged to um, think of others this holiday season and drop off um, food or gifts for people who are not as fortunate as some of the rest of us. And with that, I would remind people that some of our organizations, um, particularly locally, Meals on Wheels and the Greater Ballinsville Ambulance Corps are in a, the midst of their fund drives. Um, a lot of a uh, lot of groups are hurting. You know, Rescue Mission, Salvation Army. They take care of a lot of people. Um, if if anybody's got a little bit of give to give, um, the, all, all those places be more than willing to accept it. Our volunteer center uh, does great things. You always can look to them if you find that you have an extra. $10 bill or $20 bill you don't know what to do with, they'd be happy to find some place to spend it and help somebody have a nice holiday. Um, I would like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe. Um, we, 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 one second, Mark. We are in a, in a little bit sketchy time right now where things have picked up uh, with the virus spreading. Um, we're, we're kind of back to almost to where we were in April with you know, make sure you're washing your hands and doing the things you're wearing your masks and doing the things you're supposed to do. Uh, we need to get the levels back down. Uh, we don't, we don't want to get into another where they switch us from a yellow zone to an orange zone that shuts down a lot of businesses. Uh, right now, a lot of our businesses are actually doing pretty, pretty good. Our restaurants particularly um, have found ways to survive and do it well. Uh, thanks to our, general population for uh, remembering our local businesses. Mark, do you have something? Yes, I, just thinking now if uh, the third is gonna be our, our budget, our meeting sandwiched around two budget session, uh, maybe it wouldn't be the best night for the county to give a presentation on the sewer uh, changeover. That may take a while to digest and a lot of back and forth questions. Okay. Uh, we might want to have them pushed out. I'll see if I can get them to come to the second meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that. Anything else for anybody? Uh, Mayor, was there a motion to pay the bills yet? Nope. That's next. Okay. Bruce, let, let us know how everything is at Glacier National Park. Tilly. <laughs> Shep, where's your granddaughter? She's home. I, I haven't seen her since this weekend. Okay. That's all right. We got a big thanks. We got it. Well, I'm not going to be, I got to be careful. We don't have a big Thanksgiving plan, but we've got a few people coming over less than 10. <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> I, I caught myself. You're wearing masks. I'm sure. I'm yep. sure. Some people, my family, if we were, we aren't getting together, but if we were, I'm sure they would encourage me to wear a mask just all the time. <laughs> Um, can I get a motion to pay bills as audited? 
Andy? Second. Suko? All in favor? Okay. Uh, carried. I get a motion to adjourn the meeting at 814. Andy? <laughs> and Mark Second. Watson. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Again, have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. In December. Thank you. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> <laughs>